GFC has always been known for a secret blend of 11 herbs and spices. However, in recent times in China, this may not be quite enough. We are from Team Nexus, I'm Elliot, my colleagues Cheng Liang, Elena, and Greg, <laughs> and we're here to present to you our strategy for KFC's game plan in China. Now, a bit of context about KFC in China. What do, we, what do we know about KFC in China? We know that KFC is one of the market leaders in the Chinese fast food industry, especially because it's a Western cuisine. We will see that we, are suff we suffered heavily during the recent scares in terms of health and hygiene. Also, we lack assurance from our consumers and both up our supply chain and down to our consumers, and both sides feel there's lack of trust in the system. However, we believe that with our strategy, we want to establish KFC in China as the preferred brand for fast food in China, into for Western fast food. We want to regain consumer trust and build confidence in the safety and the quality of KFC's food. And finally, we want effective supply chain management that allows us to support and sustain this level of trust and engagement. In order to do so, we've identified three key issues that we believe are key. Firstly, how can China, KFC in China enhance its positioning? Secondly, how can KFC and in China regain consumer trust? Thirdly, how can it better manage its supply chain? These are points that we'll go through through our presentation, and now Elena will bring you through our situation analysis. So KFC has always been known in China as the premium Western fast food brand. This was really what draw customers to their stores initially. And with being a premium Western brand, what really drives it is its quality assurance that it is able to provide to its consumers. And with that, what goes behind such quality assurance that it can provide is really the two on two hands. We have the sourcing of process as well as the, inf the informing and educational initiatives that it has for its consumers. And when we go down look at, at what exactly does that entail, it really means a good supply chain management and having consumer communication plans. So of course a crisis communication plans when food scares will turn up. So the implication of this really is that for KFC to maintain such a positioning, it really needs to step up its efforts at every stage of the way to further enhance and affirm such a positioning. When we look at firstly at its supply sourcing process, we realize when we look at a poultry farm in industry, China in China itself, the industry itself is extremely fragmented. It's made out of many small-scale family-owned farms, especially due to the government laws in terms of land owning. And these farms usually sell to cooperatives, and this is under the family company and family model. They then sell them to processors, which then hand them over to KFC China or the other stores in the young group. But when we look at this, every step away has its barriers and challenges that needs to be overcome. Being, having many small-scale farms, it really means that end purchasers, such as KFC China, have very little control over the entire process. And there is also a lack of standards that is enforced across the entire process, which is really a challenge when it comes to ensuring food safety. And in terms of where the contract model is concerned, there is really uncertainties about whether the enforcement of contracts will be assured. And so the farmers are uncertain, the end consumers are uncertain as well. So this is really a problem that we need to address. And we have also seen with the new herb group that processors may not be that able to guarantee such standards all the time. With them forging fake qualifications and also not being clear about the procedures and what they feed to the chicken. So with this, this is also an issue that KFC needs to overcome. And lastly, on KFC's part itself, whenever there's a scandal, we realize that they're very slow to react to it, and they're also not open with the amount of information that they do disclose. But is that really all the, all the problems that KFC has to juggle? There are plus sides of KFC being the really big international group that it is in China. It yeah, definitely has supplier bargaining power that allows it control over the entire process and it also has the knowledge of best global practices as it has also have operations in many other countries and of course in USA itself. So what KFC should really do here, given its strengths and the challenges that it faces, it should leverage on its own strengths to take a more pro proactive role in managing the supply chain instead of leaving it to just the system itself. I will then look at, on the other hand, where the consumers are concerned about and look at whether KFC has been addressing such consumer concerns. So KFC has launched their own Operation Thunder plan and which it used to, in its attempt to try and assure consumers of food safety standards. And with that, we have its mini site, its TV advertisements, even its in-store displays and a poultry contest. But yet, on the other hand, it realizes that it has achieved quite limited success with such a campaign. 
why is that so really? When we ask ourselves such questions, and we analyze that what are the messages are being conveyed through their campaign, we realize that they have taken a very scientific approach in terms of trying to tell how the percentage of food that they give and the percentage of antibiotics that they use. And really consumers, they are not very open to such scientific information because they just want to know whether their food is safe or not safe. And this is a lack of consumer engagement because their messages are very one-way and passive. So consumers are just on the receiving end. And really, we don't know how much can we trust in terms of just being handed down information like that. So the implication here is really for KFC to change its campaign to adopt a more engaging and an interactive approach to establish such an emotional connection and resonance with our consumers. And that really is the way to go if we want to convince our consumers of the food safety that KFC can provide. So today, us and Nexus, Team Nexus, have come up with our KFC strategy for you. Firstly, knowing it all, knowing what our process entails and how we can offer to our consumers, forging trust in our consumers, as well as creating a more effective supply chain. And how do we do that? Allow us to look at the positioning of KFC. So we know that KFC, especially with its food scare, its market share has been eroded, and many competitors have taken the chance to enter the market. We have local competitors such as our Kung Fu Catering, which are also moving to provide more nutritional food. We also have other other local offers where they are trying to produce more localized food for Chinese consumers which may appeal to them more. And then on the other hand, we definitely have McDonald's and Burger King who are trying to make their entrance into the Chinese market. So with eroding market share, we realize it's really because the KFC's value proposition itself is eroding. Then it's no longer sufficient for them to just be known as a premium Western brand. We find that our Chinese consumers are becoming much more discerning. Being premium, being Western, is just not enough for them anymore. They really want to know more about the processes that goes behind, or how the company manages itself, and the food safety standards as well. They're expecting much more. And that was actually why they first turned to local, to global companies, because they could not trust their local companies. And with the local companies catching up with their standards, this is definitely something that KFC cannot let go. And also there's now the lack of trust in foreign brands, so it's not enough to just merely be foreign. So we propose here an uh, enhanced positioning that KFC should take. Besides being just finger licking good, it should also be responsible and trusted. So that's how the positioning that KFC should take. How really should it go about enforcing trust and rebuilding con consumers' confidence allow us to bring it through it. Thank you, Elena. So now, given the very fragmented approach of KFC and how it has lost its consumers' confidence, now we're going to show you how we are going to forge, once again, consumer trust in KFC. So taking a look at There are many issues that KFC has to solve and there are measures that we have to take into consideration where we are going to solve problems in the short term and in the long term. So in the short term, the solutions that we have to, uh, sorry, the problems that we have to come up, the solutions that we have to come up with is how are we going to communicate healthy and safe chickens that KFC has to its consumers. And in the long term, how are we going to uh, instill measures so as to prevent such situations from coming into play again and causing KFC to spiral into disaster. So using these two approaches, we believe that we will be able to regain, once again, consumer trust in KFC. So now how are we going to communi communicate to our consumers? Taking a look at our operation thunder, it has been met with limited success as mentioned by Elena earlier. So what this means is that we need to have an interactive approach where we communicate the, uh, the, the health benefits, sorry, the, how KFC is safe and sound to eat. And we've analyzed the Chinese consumer market and we've determined that gaming is very popular in China and that is how we want to go into educating our consumers. So today we are very proud to present to you our very own um, developed mobile application. It's called Ji Shi. In, in English, this means chicken time. So what this mobile application does is it's actually a role-playing game, online role-playing game on mobile platforms, which allows consumers to uh, 
be an individual inside a game and they have to complete educational quests along the way and these would help consumers learn about how the sources of chicken in KFC are ethically sourced. So if they are able to do this and get the quest, complete the quests, they will be rewarded with discounts which, which they can bring down to KFC and redeem these discounts. So this has two key benefits from here. The first one is that it is an effective consumer education means and also this goes to show that KFC is able to revive itself. It is no longer just a maturing, old, outdated brand. It, is, it, will, become, it will be once again a young and trendy brand. So we also have to establish trust amongst our consumers. As of now, there is a lack of traceability in the sources that KFC gets its chickens. And as a result of that, consumers are wary of purchasing KFC products. So what this means is that we have to make the sources of KFC be more transparent. And how we are going to do that is through our consumer touch points as well as through our packaging. In our consumer touch points, we are going to build upon what has already been established in the Operation Thunder approach that KFC has adopted, which means that we are going to uh, enhance the information that is plastered all around KFC outlets, and at the same time, we're going to educate our employees so when they come into contact with the consumers, they can tell consumers safely that their food is ethically sourced and healthy. Also, we're going to take a look at how we're going to communicate this through packaging. One way is to, uh, you can write a random fact. So, for example, once you open up the box of KFC and you see a random fact about how KFC chickens are healthy, they are safe to eat. There's also a, a we also have to prevent future disasters from happening. And taking a look at the instant chicken scandal that has bogged KFC down in the recent scandal, there is uh, the management has been slow and has unsatisfactory reactions to this scandal. What this means is that we need to have proper contingency measures when KFC meets these disasters once again. Therefore, we propose that KFC develops a crisis management center so as to preempt future obstacles, to develop responsive measures, and to limit the losses from future issues. So with that, we've shown you how we are going to once again rebuild consumer trust. So we will now show you, bring you forward and show you how we are going to create a better um, supply chain uh, management for KFC. Yes. In taking a look at the supply chain of KFC, we notice several things. We first need to make a decision in order to establish traceability in our supply chain. How should KFC get the chickens and where should they get it from? So we mapped it out and here we see that KFC could either import chickens, buy them locally, or set up its own farm and start producing them as they would a farmer. And in matching them up in terms of strategic fit, in terms of competency matching, in terms of macroeconomic issues, we've realized that the solution that KFC should adopt is to go with buy local, source local. Why, why did we come to this? Let's take a look here. In strategic fit, we realized that KFC has a very strong local sourcing that's part of its DNA, especially in China. Also, we know that in terms of competency, KFC has high, high buying power and has high control over its internal logistics chain, especially in China. Perhaps even most importantly here, in terms of macroeconomic issues, we notice that in China, China imports very little meat. Also, its domestic consumption of meat is high. Thirdly, domestic production of meat is high. So what we find here, it's key insight, really is key, is that China is producing most of its own meat that it consumes. So in terms of considering these three, fit, competence, and macroeconomic issues, we realize that buying local is the way for KFC to go about establishing a traceable supply chain. Now, as in, after we have decided on where to get our chickens from, we, re we notice that existing processing suppliers are unreliable. And along the supply chain, such as Liuha and Ninghai, there are problems with fabricating data and failure to establish traceable quarantine qualifications and so on. Hence, we realize that the voluntary disclosure is problematic for KFC because these results which come to them do not necessarily match up the truths on the ground. We realize the need to establish more oversight and control over the processes involved in the supply chain. In order to do so, we propose two things. Firstly, control and stability, and second, some monitoring and enforcement processes. Firstly, let's take a look at control and stability. In control, we notice that in light of the processes, 
we're proposing obtaining equity stakes in processing firms to establish vertically up the supply chain. We believe that through capital investments, we're going to establish and create more control along the supply chain that allow us to have better understanding of where our products come from. Secondly, in terms of farmers, we notice the problem with farmers reneging on their contracts. And we see the importance of designing flexible pricing contracts that allows farmers to maintain their contracts and allows to keep the level of sourcing that we require. This contract not performance, reducing non contract non performance will allow us to have better processes across the supply chain for growth. Now we we'll move on towards monitoring and enforcement. We notice that Yum's SAR audit is only held once a year. It's problematic, it's also a global policy that does not have the level of detail required in China. Hence we believe that we can improve these processes through increasing the frequency of quality site visits, implementing centralized processes like standards checklists, which can be enforced across, across different um, areas, as well as through post-inspection reports that allow for tracking and observance of where faults lie and where it can be corrected. We also see price penalties in terms of failing to meet standards that KFC, as having the high buyer power, is able to establish along the supply chain. Now we've seen so many strategies here. Firstly, how to forge client relationships, how to build trust in the consumers. Secondly, how to make a supply chain more robust. Now let's talk about what impact this has on KFC and its organization. <clears throat> so our KFC strategy here will allow us to achieve positive revenue growth from 2015 onwards. And as you can see here, uh, if we have more optimistic scenarios, for example, if the uh, private consumption growth rate in China is a lot more optim optimistic than we thought, then we can achieve uh, up to a 12% growth rate by 2018. However, of course, we also have the flip side where we have pessimistic scenarios. In that case, we see us achieving a positive growth rate much later, about 2017. So, uh, when we come up with these assumptions, we, uh, with these projections, we base it upon several cost assumptions. So, uh, for example, as you can see here, the traceability system development here, we, we foresee that taking out about 6% of profit margins. And so process research for, for our no part of our strategy, we also take up about 1% of our profit margins. And uh, important note here is that the acquisition of processes, as mentioned earlier, will be funded by, by, by the young parent group. Uh, uh, by the young parent group. So how, how do we exactly come about with the scenario for a pessimistic outlook? In this case, we're talking about the risks, uh, the risks that we've considered uh, based on our strategy. So for example, if stockholders are worried about our prospects, then the stock price could fall further. Now, stockholders could be worried because they'll be asking, why are we incurring so much expenditure during a time when revenue growth is, is, is actually negative? So in that, in that sense, we have to facilitate clear communication to explain to them why, why we are doing this. It, 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 well, to, to summarize this, we are actually taking in short-term pain for long-term recovery. So it's important for us to take on these expenditures to have a sustained a longer recovery for, K, for KFC. Uh, another factor to consider here would be, for example, how if, if market prices of raw chicken fluctuates. And this will affect us because of the floating uh, price contracts that we are now engaging with our processes. In this case, we can choose to enter a long-term contract supplier so we can lock in certain prices, or we can just simply absorb this higher cost in exchange for the high stability these processes are giving us. So now that we have considered the risks involved in this strategy, we have to consider how are we going to implement this timeline here. So there are a few, a few things that, uh, that, that should be highlighted from this timeline. The first thing is that, as you can see here, we have several activities that, be, that can be executed immediately. So for example, the development of the chicken type app or the market analysis uh, part of, of our strategy can be executed immediately. And this is important because we need to tell our stockholders that we are doing something about the problem. Next, we can see as, as the activities are spread out across time, uh, this gives us another two more advantages. Firstly, Firstly, uh, it, it, it ensures that there is no one point in time where, we are too, uh, we are, where our activities are too financially taxing on the company. And secondly, by having activities spread out across time, we can constantly update our stakeholders on the various things that we're we currently doing. So at the start of this presentation, we talked about KFC's problems in terms, of, in terms of its public image, as well as its need for a better supply chain. So based on our KFC strategy, where we first know about the needs for transparency, we forge trust with our customers, and then we create a safer and more stable supply chain. We can help ensure that KFC uh, regains its competitiveness and becomes finger looking good again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, students.
There's now 15 minutes of time for question and answers between the judges and the students. Ladies <laughs> first. Uh, thank you, Team Nexus. That was uh, very well put together and um, well presented, so, so well done. Um, I have uh, a couple of questions. One was um, perhaps to Eleanor um, with regards to uh, combining two concepts. One is about being respected and trusted and the other is finger licking good. So you've got fun and you've got compliance and you're blending those two ideas together. So um, I can see the fun with the app and I can see the compliance with the um, with all the JV stuff and the vertical integration. So that's good to do the increase compliance monitoring. How do you, how do you, do you tend to bring those two together, those two ideas? Because they're quite different ideas, yeah? Just add so because if we're just talking about emotional appeal to the customers, that's not going to be enough. The customers need to know that the product is safe, and therefore they need to have the image that the compliance measures implemented by KFC are safe, mm -hmm. and therefore in both ways we can attract more customers to come back. Yes. Well, uh, I really found the uh, hat, the chicken time, very original. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and uh, I have only one comment, one question. And uh, have you analyzed the uh, responsibility, uh, not only yet very well done uh, the analysis of uh, KFC, their responsibility, have you analyzed the one of the government uh, uh, the supply chain from uh, the uh, farmers uh, uh, up to the, uh, to the end? Why do you think initially the suppliers um, were uh, using excessive antibiotics? And, and what part of your plan now uh, changes that incentive to prevent it from happening again? I think the reason why suppliers have been using a lot of antibiotics is because farming conditions haven't been that great in especially the small locally owned farms. And that's why suppliers are pumping in a lot of antibiotics to prevent chickens from falling ill or from dying prematurely so that they have a higher yield from the farms. But with how our system is changed, that's not a So I believe with, because of the fragmentation of the farms, especially because they're so small holder farms, so each farm is very individualistic and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make sure that my, I can sell my products and quickly get them out. So these antibiotics help the farmers in that sense. So we believe that through having these longer term contracts and through establishing um, further reaching vertical supply chains, we're able to give more confidence to the to this to farmers as well, um, in a way that we're able to kind of smoothen it out and um, allow for um, perhaps less less injunctions in terms of um, health concerns and such as antibiotics. Especially because we especially because we provide um, that form of consistency knowing that we're gonna we can have this flexible pricing contract and we believe that this will address the needs of the, um, the farmers. So so you think if just by giving them more certainty that you're gonna pay them more money that the incentive to lie or to use more antibiotics or uh, not improve the conditions is going to go away? I believe uh, that's not true, which is why we also have this, um, which is why 
um, we do have to integrate the um, enforcement and monitoring aspects as well in terms of um, finding out what is happening on the ground um, as opposed to just expecting it to um, perform and to because uh, in terms of report self-reporting there's always the tendency um, for to fudge the books and hence we, we see the necessity of sending our own teams to inspect and to see um, where our suppliers are in terms of so in terms of in terms of penalty plan that's correct um, we see price penalties being put in place as well which will allow us to have some form of control over our suppliers thank you Um, looking at your plan, your implementation plan, um, again, you're opening with your development of the app, which is lots of fun and it's really great, and it's caught to your building up uh, regaining trust with the customer. Um, I'm just wondering what your consideration is to being able to then deliver on that promise. So um, if your quality assurance or supply chain elements are not there in time, possibly you could start to build a trust that you can't meet. So would you consider changing the plan? Um, to resequence that? What are your thoughts? I think I rightly pointed out that you're starting with the app first, but I think it's because it's also mentioned in the case that KFC is what they are producing right now isn't exactly substandard or doesn't meet standards, it's just that they are unable to communicate it to their consumers properly. So they've already started with their own operation tender, which means their own products are safe to consume, just that they are able to get the message out. But for us, beyond just doing that, we also want to take a look at how we're going to change our supply chain system. Because while our food may be safe now, it may not be in the future, as farmers come up with more ways and tricks to lose that you in a very artificial way. So that's why we have chosen to come up with an app because we realize that crisis communication now is really key for them, because they need to regain customer trust right now before they can start. So KFC historically had some crisis before, uh, and they rebounded very, very quickly. Uh, they responded very quickly. What do you think was different this time? Why did they delay? Why did they hide the, the results for a period of time be before responding? And why do you think your plan will be different now in the future, if another crisis was to occur. Um, so on, on that question, I believe that how historically in KFC China, many of the responses were very reactive. So they wait for pressure to build in terms of, can you please report this, you know, what's going on, I want to know something, and then they report. Um, partially also because of the voluntary aspect of the reporting and the laws that do not require you to, to you know, publish your test results and so forth. And so I think what, what we're trying to see here is that we're adopting a more proactive approach towards towards um, reaching out to consumers and telling them the truth. Not just the truth, but telling them what we're doing. So we're having that transparency and that communication channels and we believe um, we'll be able to um, kind of circumvent, uh, prevent in fact the problems that happened before by being more proactive towards reaching out to our consumers. I think at the same time, uh, we also have developed, we have also proposed to have a crisis mm -hmm. management centre so that if in the case such a situation arises again, they will be able to react accordingly and give a more prompt reaction to the public. Because as of now, as you mentioned, uh, KFC has taken a delayed approach when they have uh, responded to the public and that has tainted their image. So our crisis management centre is going to give them a more immediate reaction because all of the, all, we have, the crisis management centre would preempt some kind of uh, situation that might arise and they will have a means of reacting to that and having an appropriate kind of answer to the public. see from this information timeline, we've kind of staggered our various activities across uh, our five-year plan. I mean, just a five-year plan because sometimes it's, it's a bit hard to foresee anything goes beyond five years. So <coughs> just purely based on a five-year plan like this, for example, you can see that the uh, development of the chicken type app will occur concurrently with the crisis management center. Oh, so you're setting those up to Yeah. 
yeah, for example. Um, and uh, if you look back at the financials, we have kind of considered all these various costs uh, in our profit margins. Yes. And we feel that because, uh, because KFC has been able to historically keep its operational cost, mar uh, cost uh, rather low, and in, that, in that case, it has some sort of a cushion for it to absorb this expenditure as well. Some time for more questions. <coughs> so if you have. Um, the app is great um, for customers that go to KFC that don't have a phone. What is your strategy for them? <laughs> they get some fun facts in their boxes. In the boxes, yeah. <laughs> they get a free phone. <laughs> 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 so I think, as we've mentioned, for customers who don't have. Customers who don't have phones, uh, the application will not be applicable to them. But there are other ways that we propose how we're going to reach out to them through our consumer touch points as well as our packaging. So we hope that through these two um, means, we also be able to reach out to consumers who do not have access to smartphones. So just on that point, so the consumer who used to eat at KFC that no longer goes, how are you, how are you reaching that person? They're not coming in buying the box to see the flap. So how how are you how are you getting them back into the uh, to the locations? I think given that then of course we did manage to include that, but we have to consider other traditional forms of communication that will, for example, reach out to the older population. But I think the main point that we're supposed to we are trying to drive across is that we cannot just be very scientific and direct about our communication. We have to be adopt a more emotional and interactive kind of stance in our communication. So likewise, when we do adopt traditional means such as TV advertisements, these are the same elements that we want to include into our advertisements as well. Any more questions? When you um, when you look at your suppliers and you're going to do some monitoring uh, on their activities, wh which part of that do you think is the most important? I think um, so. The monitoring process will be several stages. So we'll be looking at identifying our key key um, the key suppliers that we wish to look at, and then after doing so, I think the, the most important part will be to essentially compare um, what they are reporting and what we are what they are reporting and what we see in the ground. So I think having that groundwork is also. Um, quite key because um, that's where we send our people to observe and to see that the facts match up. Because uh, the key issue with our reporting is that it's usually untestable to see if it's true or false. And so I believe that sending, having that groundwork is um, key to um, solving the issue of monitoring. <laughs> yeah. and, and how frequently, I mean, you talked about the annual and I think yes. you want to do more frequently, but how, how frequently is that and what is feasible, what is possible given the fact that these are local farms, they're spread out all over, um, how many more people do you need to hire? How many more people do you need to train? Is it really uh, you know, possible to do that type of monitoring? So I think when we talk about monitoring as well, the level of monitoring that we're able to achieve particularly well would be at the processor level, especially because these are more consolidated. As you move towards the farms, you have to do more of a spot approach, um, as opposed to a consistent every 4,000 farms, we're going to go with each and one of them. So I see we see this uh, kind of staggering to the intensity in terms of the processor level, and then kind of tapering that and doing spot checks more to the farm level, individual farm levels. Mm -hmm. But what about educating the farmers? Mm -hmm. So who, who is going to do that? Because ultimately, you, know, you need to get them up to standards mm -hmm. that you're putting in place. So I think um, what we're talking about as well, so together with our checklist, we're proposing that the reports are published after as well. So as part of these reports, we believe that the information can be shared with the farmers on the ground as well. Just these reports that we propose are not solely for our documentation purposes, but to share the farmers and how to improve best practices based on findings from across um, the, across the different monitoring spots that have been done. So we see knowledge sharing being done in this manner. Post inspection report. Mm -hmm. All right. That concludes the question and answer session. Thank you, students Thanks. from the National University of Singapore. Thank you. There you go.